Welcome to our section about the slope of the line. In this video, we're going to learn what is a slope, and then we're going to learn how to find the slope with the formula of the slope, the rise over wrong method, and the slope intercept form. Let's go ahead and start. First, what is a slope? The slope is the inclination of the line. It determines the relationship between two variables. For example, Let's say that I have a line like this one, and I want to know if the slope is positive or the slope is negative. How do I know that? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call here upstairs, and here I'm going to call this guy downstairs. All right. As you can see here, my slope is going downstairs. Therefore, because she's going downstairs, this is a negative slope. What about this one? Well, in this case, I'm going upstairs. Remember, upstairs is always here, and downstairs is always here. So a lot of people tend to get confused and tell me that the, the line is going like this way. Well, you only deal with upstairs here and downstairs here. Therefore, since my line is going upstairs, my slope is positive. Now we're going to have special cases. Anytime you have a vertical line such as this such as this one my line is going to be or my slope is going to be undefined anytime that i have no inclination or i have a horizontal line my slope is going to be zero let's go ahead and practice here is my slope positive or negative remember upstairs is here downstairs is here so is my slope going upstairs or downstairs since you're going downstairs she's going to be negative what about here? Again, upstairs is here, downstairs is here. Is she positive or is she negative? I hope you say positive. Finally, a special case. Is this a vertical or horizontal line? When she's vertical, she's actually undefined. And when she's horizontal, she's actually zero. Beautiful. How do I find the slope with the formula? All right, the formula to find the slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's say they ask me to find the slope between these two coordinates. I need at least two points, if I'm going to be using the formula, to figure out the slope. Okay, the first thing I need to do is to label. I'm going to go ahead and call this guy x1, and I'm going to go ahead and call this guy y1. Therefore, if this is x1 and this is y1, this is going to be x2 and this is going to be y2. Many students ask me, would it be the same if I would have chosen this point as x1, y1, and this one x2 as y2? And the answer is yes, you will get the same answer. As long as you respect that if you choose x1, then this one has to be y1. You cannot do x1, y2. If you respect x1, y1, x2, y2, you can go ahead and find the formula, no matter which point you pick. So let's go ahead and substitute. Now, I see here that y2 is negative 6, so I'm going to put a negative 6 here. y1 is actually 2, so this is minus 2. Then I'm going to have x2, which in this case is 0, and then I'm going to have minus x1, but x1 is actually what? Negative 2. So now I'm going to go ahead and work this out. Now here I just have negative 6 minus 2 is actually negative 8. Then I'm going to have here. Negative times negative is a positive. So this is 0 plus 2, which is equal to 2. And let's see how that looks. Finally, negative 8 divided by 2 is going to be equal to negative 4. My slope is actually negative 4. Let's go ahead and understand rise over wrong method. Anytime you have the rise over wrong, you're going to do rise over wrong. So let's do it. First, let's figure it out two points of the point, two points of the line, I'm sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this point here, and I'm going to grab this point here. Once you grab these two points, go ahead and make a line here, and then make a line here. As you can see here, I'm just going to build like a triangle. Once I build this triangle, I want to figure it out how much is from here to here. That's going to be my rise. 
And then I'm going to figure out how much is here to here, which is going to be my run. Well, my rise is going to be 8, and my run is going to be 2. Because you can see here that I went up 2, and here I went up 8. Therefore, rise over run is going to be 8 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. Then you need to ask yourself, is my slope positive or negative? Remember, upstairs is here, downstairs is here. Is she going upstairs or is she going downstairs? As you can see here, she's going downstairs, therefore my slope has to be negative. Finally, my slope by the rise over row method is going to be negative 4. Let's go ahead and do another one. Now, first, I'm going to go ahead and just pick two points. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pick this point, and I'm going to go ahead and pick this point. Once you pick those two points, you need to make a triangle. And now I'm going to go ahead and do rise over run. Well, first I'm going to go ahead and see how much I rise and then how much I run. So I can see here that I rise 2 and I run 2. Therefore, rise over run is equal to 1. My slope is going to be 1. Now I ask myself, is my slope positive or negative? Since she's going up, upstairs, my slope is positive. Therefore, my slope is equal to 1. Now, you could pick another point. Let's say that you pick this point, and let's say that you pick this point. You're going to get the same answer. Now, let's see how much you rise here. From 2 to 4 here, you actually have 6 units. 2 here and 4 here. So 6 units. And then from here to here, you actually have another 6 units. 6 divided by 6 is going to give me 1. So no matter which point you pick, you will always get the same answer because the line has a constant slope. That means that the slope will never change. Now, what happens if I want to figure it out this with the formula? Well, the first thing I have to do is to go ahead and remember that my slope or the formula of the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now here, I can easily identify my point. Now I can go ahead and substitute y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I went ahead and I pick uh, y2 as 0, y1 as negative 2, but remember, negative times negative, that's why this guy becomes a positive, and then x2 over x1, x2 over x1. Now you can see that either by rise over run or with the formula, you will get the same answer. Let's do another one. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and grab this point here, and I'm going to go ahead and grab this point here. As you can see here, actually, yes, those are good points. I can go ahead and say that I rise two units because two to four is two, and I'm running, let's see, 2, 2, 2, because look, this is 8, 6, 4, and 2, that's 6, rise over run, that's going to be 2 over 6, when I simplify, that's 1 over 3. Then I ask myself, is my slope positive or negative? She's positive, so my answer is 1 over 3. Let's just do another one. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pick this point, and I'm going to go ahead and pick this point. So, I build a triangle just like the one you see here. And then let's see how much you rise, how much you run. Well, on rise, I rise here, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and then I run one. So five over one is equals to five. I ask myself, is my slope positive or negative? As you can see here, my slope is going downstairs. Therefore, my slope must be negative. And my slope is gonna be negative five. How do I figure out the slope with the slope intercept form? Let's remember, y will always be equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope. I need to know that the slope is always next to the x. So anytime you have something like this, you tell me which one is the slope. Well, remember, you find the value that is next to the x, and that's going to be 4. So the slope here is 4. What about here? What is the value next to the x? I hope you say negative 7. Finally, what about if I have something like this? As you can see here, I need to have 
the, the equation y equals mx plus b. I don't have here y equals mx plus b. So I need to go ahead and solve for y. That way I can go ahead and get y equals mx plus b. Let's move this 3x to the other side. I get negative 3x. And now let's divide everything by 8. Once I divide everything by 8, I get that y is equals to negative 3 over 8x plus 16 over 8. Finally, simplifying my equation, I get that my slope is going to be equals to the value next to the x. In this case, negative 3 over 8. Finally, which one is my slope here? Well, remember, I need the value that is next to the x. As you can see here, the value next to the x is actually negative 1 half. And you can see it because negative 1 half is the same as x over 2. Basically, you're just hiding the one right here. But I need to make sure that I always grab the sign that is before the number. Finally, my slope is going to be negative 1 over 2. What about here? What is my slope? You're, you're going to ask me, what is my x? Well, remember, y equals to 5 is just basically a horizontal line that is going to look like this one. Because this is a horizontal line, my slope is going to be equal to 0. Conclusion, anytime you have y equals 5, y equals 3, y equals whatever without an x here, your slope is going to be 0. What about here? Well, as you can see here, this is x equals to negative 9. So you're going to have a vertical line. Therefore, anytime you have x equals something without no y or anything else, your slope is going to be on the fine. Now, in this lesson, you learn how to find the slope with the formula, the rise of a row method, and the slope-intercept form. I hope you learn a lot. And again, thanks so much for learning.